let us see the structure of tooth now when we see the structure of tooth we have three basic parts one is the crown second is the neck and third is the root now this area this is the crown so that area is the crown the area which is exposed outside is called as crown this is the jaw bone this is the jaw bone this totally is the jaw bone and there is a cavity inside the jaw bone the cavity is called as alveolus now teeth are present in two bones one is maxilla and other is mandibles and this bone and the upper jaw is called as mandible and this bone in the lower jaw is called as this this bone in the upper jaw is called maxilla this bone in the lower jaw is called as mandibles now in the maxilla and in mandibles there are cavities the cavity is called as alveolus there are several alveoli are present and teeth are present inside the sockets that's why we call it as thecodont dentition teeth present inside socket socket itself is called alveolus now part of the bone part of the bone part of the teeth part of the teeth which is embedded inside which is not visible externally this is called as root is called as root and in between in between the exposed part and in between that part which is embedded inside the jaw bone you can find an area which is called as neck so neck is the second part and root is the third part now what is neck area where we can find gum a fleshy area which covers the tooth at at the base very close to the jaw bone a fleshy area is present which is which is covering that entrance that area is called gum gum is also called gingiva it is also called as gingiva now the bulk the bulk of the tooth is made up of dentine this bulk of the tooth is made up of dentine with a cavity at the center the cavity is called as pulp cavity a cavity is present at the center of dentine it is called as pulp cavity covering the dentine externally you can find enamel covering the dentine externally you can find enamel enamel is the hardest substance in the body it still contains 96 if you see the composition of enamel it contains 96% water and 2% organic substances organic substances includes proteins certain proteins so if you see the composition of enamel 96% of which is water the remaining 4% 96% water and the remaining 4% includes organic substances organic substances includes various proteins the proteins includes amelogenins and enamelins enamel is ectodermal in origin enamel is produced from cells the cells are called ameloblast cells embryonically ameloblast cells they originate from ectoderm so from this ameloblast cells enamel is produced enamel is light yellow in color to grayish white in color it is actually transparent and it has a maximum thickness of 2 and 1/2 mm at the region of cusps indiscriminate brushing will remove the enamel and in case of enamel there is no collagen now beneath the enamel we have dentine dentine it is similar to bone except that haversian canals are absent the dentine is originating from 
a different type of cells called as odontoblast cells. This dentin originates from embryonic cells called odontoblast cells. Odontoblast cells are mesodermal in origin. So dentin is mesodermal in origin. And it is similar to bone except that haversham canals are absent. But inside there are cells. The cells are supplied nourishment by cells called odontoblast cells. You, you will find odontoblast cells, some of the odontoblast cells are also lining the pulp cavity. They are lining the pulp cavity. So through small canaliculi, they will be supplying nourishment to the cells present inside the dentin. So these are odontoblast cells. These odontoblast cells are present in the cavity, in the pulp cavity, lining the dentin. And this, this cavity is called pulp cavity and in between the jawbone, in between the jawbone and dentin, there is a gap. The gap contains, you, 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 it contains two things. On the outside, In between the jawbone and dentine, we have got two things. The outer membrane is called periodontal membrane. This, this membrane is called periodontal membrane. Dontal means teeth, peri means above. See, you can see above the jawbone, in the alveolus, you will see periodontal membrane. The periodontal membrane is made up of dense irregular fibrous connective tissue. They are aware of that tissue, dense irregular fibrous connective tissue. And very next to that, very next to that, Very next to that, there is cement. That means in between periodontal membrane and dentine, there is something called as cementum. Cementum is soft form of dentine. Now if you observe the composition of cementum, if you observe the composition of cementum, cementum contains 50% of hydroxyapatite. This cementum contains half of hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is calcium phosphate. Calcium phosphate, Ca10, PO46, OH twice. So that is calcium phosphate. The remaining 50% includes organic substances. The remaining 50% includes organic substances such as collagen. It also includes proteoglycons. You are seeing the composition of cementum. I told you cementum is a soft form of dentin. Now half of it is made up of calcium phosphate. Remaining half contains collagen and proteoglycon. When I say proteoglycon, it contains a core of proteins along with glycose aminoglycon. So both of them combine together to form proteoglycon. Now if you see dentin, Dentin contains 70% hydroxyapatite. This dentin contains up to 70% hydroxyapatite, some 20% collagen and 10% water. So whatever present there in, in collagen, they are also present in dentin. But in dentin there is more of calcium phosphate and uh, less of collagen. But in case of cementum, there is more of collagen and less of hydroxyapatite. And cementum is light yellow in color, dentin is yellow in color. The yellow color, see since the enamel is transparent, the color of enamel is actually the color of dentin only. So dentin, since it is visible externally through that transparent enamel, you can see that light yellow coloration. 
Now in the pulp cavity, so this is the pulp cavity, you can see the blood capillaries are entering. The blood capillaries are entering inside, nerves are also entering through that. So through the pulp cavity, the blood capillaries of arteries and veins, they enter. So some nerves also are entering through the pulp cavity. And the root, generally a single root is present for most of the teeth. All incisors, all canines and lower premolars, there is one root. But in some tooth, there are two and three roots also. So when there are more than one root, they are called supernumerary teeth. Supernumerary roots. They are called supernumerary roots. Now in case of molars, we will have either three or two. So they are actually more in number.